Hello, I'm Ginger Bedell, an instructional designer at SUNY Buffalo State, and I'm going to talk about the strategic network of universal design for learning. I want to share a story about a fifth grade student, Nicholas. Nicholas and his classmates had just participated in a science activity where they learned about chemical reactions. During the activity, he was engaged with his group members and they completed each of the tasks successfully. Following the activity, students were asked to write a reflection of what they did and what they learned so the teacher could assess them. The teacher noticed that most of the students were busy writing, but Nicholas was sitting in his chair. His science journal was open and on his desk, but he hadn't yet written anything in it. So the teacher walks over to Nicholas and asks him why he isn't writing. He tells her he doesn't know what to write. So she asks him what he and his group members did during the experiment, and he explains each of the tasks that he and his partners completed. Next, she asks him what he learned from the activity, and he tells her that once they added the yeast mixture to the bottle with the dish soap, food coloring, and peroxide in it, it created a foam that expanded out of the top of the bottle. He also told her that the foam was warmer than any of the ingredients they had used to make it. It was clear from Nicholas's explanation that he understood the experiment and had learned about chemical reactions. However, if the teacher used his science journal to assess his understanding, she would think otherwise. Writing is a barrier for Nicholas. The strategic learning network relates to how learners demonstrate mastery of learning. It's the how of learning and includes providing learners with multiple means of action and expression. Let's unpack that a bit. The strategic learning network relates to how people demonstrate mastery of learning, how they organize and express ideas. In other words, how they express what they've learned. To address the strategic network, learners should answer the how question. How will they organize and express what they learn and how will they demonstrate mastery of learned concepts and skills? As you know, many learners are able to express themselves more skillfully in one medium than they are in another. Take Nicholas, for example. He was able to complete the experiment and explain it verbally to his teacher, but it was difficult for him to write about it. To accommodate these differences, it's important to provide learners with opportunities to demonstrate what they know in different ways. So when you're creating learning experiences, it's important to include different types of assessments so that all learners have the opportunity to excel provide learners with multiple means of action and expression. In most cases, writing and answering multiple choice questions are not part of our learning objective. However, we often ask learners to express what they know in one of these two ways. There are two general strategies for addressing the strategic network. First, provide choices for how learners express mastery. In other words, allow learners to demonstrate what they know in different ways. The second strategy is providing support to scaffold learners as they express mastery. The first strategy is to provide choices. There are two types of learning objectives. The first type is a content ob objective. This type of objective requires learners to demonstrate knowledge of the content, but does not identify how they need to express the knowledge. When learners are providing evidence that they're meeting a content objective, consider providing them with choices of how to demonstrate their understanding. Here's an example of a content objective. Learners will explain the process for creating a chemical reaction. Let's say that this was the objective for the science lesson in our opening story. It does not say that Nicholas has to explain the process in writing. There are many ways that he could express his learning. He could do it by writing, but he could also engage in, in a discussion with his classmates. He could take a quiz or create an illustration, or he could respond to a prompt or questions verbally. When you're able, let learners choose how they will show you what they know. When you're developing assessments, make a list of the different ways that learners can demonstrate that they've met your objective. The second strategy is to provide support. Method standards or objectives require learners to complete specific tasks. For example, compose written journal entries to reflect on the scientific process. Because method standards have an end product in mind, you can't be flexible as to how learners provide evidence, but you can pro provide support to help them meet the objective. Providing supports to scaffold students helps them to meet the learning goals. Consider how each of these supports may have helped Nicholas and his classmates. Provide students with an opportunity to discuss and ask questions about the task in a whole or small group discussion. Let learners work with a partner or in a small group. 
Each person in the group will have different strengths and they can support each other and offer feedback. Provide detailed directions and a rubric or checklist that learners can use as a guide. In Nicholas's case, a prompt, guiding questions, or a checklist may have helped him to get started. The key is to get learners started and provide touch points so they can ask questions and receive feedback. Remember, there are two strategies for addressing the strategic network. First, provide choices for how learners express mastery. Allow learners to demonstrate what they know in different ways. And provide support to scaffold learners so they're able to meet and exceed your expectations. So as you think about your learning experience, what's one assignment or activity that learners really struggle with? In other words, where's the pain point in regards to how students demonstrate their learning? Can you offer choices in the way they provide evidence of meeting your objective? If not, what types of support could you provide to help them be more successful?